to go. Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, today is uh, September the 22nd, and this is the first meeting of the Capital Outlay Committee for the year <coughs> 23 to 24. And um, welcome to our members. Why don't we just introduce ourselves, starting with Mark and Mark uh, Kelleher, um, representative of the Finance Committee. Dan Twark from the Finance Committee. Rich Larius from the Count Administrator's Office. Martha Denovan from the Select Board. I'm Ann Tucker from the Planning Board. So we have five members, and uh, I have a real good feeling we have five active members. <laughs> and uh, we still have two openings, and one is from the Town Planner. Uh, one is from Town Administrator, <laughs> one is from Select Board. Okay, so we have seven in total, but we do have a quorum, which makes life a lot easier for us. And I offer to our members that if you happen to know anyone who'd like to join us, <laughs> we can make that happen. Uh, Dan is our brand new member, representing the finance company. We wanted to welcome him personally. Um, last year was a very good year for us. Uh, we got things accomplished. Uh, this year is, is, a, is a new year. Uh, I have been lucky enough. Oh, and let me just say I'm inviting the public that if anybody would like to volunteer to be on our committee, please do and go through the uh, town administrator's office and we can make things happen. Um, for the members of the committee, we have two large spreadsheets and we will go through that. But I was fortunate enough last week uh, to spend some time with the town administrator. And I have been doing this, I guess it's my 15th year. And the way that we are expecting this process to work for us is the easiest way possible, I think. Um, what we are going to cover um, is, is simple. It's very, very simple. Um, and we do not have to go into it and make it more difficult because it's a simple process. Uh, let me just open it up uh, and just ask the current members, are there any questions before we start any any issues, anything that we should be concerned about that the members first? Um, one of you may have two sheets of the same type because I have two sheets of the same type. So hopefully you have uh, one document that says five-year capital outlay plan, FY 2025 to FY 2029 draft. Yeah. And the other document should show the current plan, which is fiscal years 2024 through 2028. Yes. So yeah. if you have two I'm of the, the same. <coughs> All right, here we go. Well, let me just offer something. Dan and I were talking about our days in high school. And um, I'm sure Dan and, and maybe some of you have had Latin. And uh, I had three years of it. And I can't pronounce or remember how it's said in Latin, but repetition is the mother of learning. <laughs> and if you have two sheets of the same thing, it's repetitive. <laughs> That's a good thing, OK? Um, I'm going to throw it over to Joe, and, and since I spent time with Joe, I, I want maybe to have input of what I think we have done in the past and what we're going to do in the future. Joe, it's up to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to you. Good morning, uh, folks. Great to see you again. Uh, and Dan, it's a particular pleasure. Um, I started here in the town of Harwich as a citizen on a committee, uh, and that's how Dan and I first met, so to now be here in our respective roles. Uh, great to see you, and thank you for your service. Uh, and for the four of you, thanks for coming back. <laughs> really, really appreciate that. Um, it's not always a good thing, you know. <laughs> repetition and consistency are great. And so um, first I want to just emphasize that uh, what brings us together, me as town administrator and you folks as capital outlay committee, are under Chapter 4 of the Charter, the town administrator must establish a capital outlay plan. And Chapter 9, our finance chapter, talks about the fact that I can rely upon a capital outlay committee to get that plan done. 
And so I'm, I'm very grateful to start the process up again and to build off of the words of the chair because we did talk about it. Uh, and for me, um, I think the process is going to be simple and the process is going to be straightforward. Um, now for those of you, well, you've all heard me in various capacities, so you know uh, that I'm going to tell you that it's 227 days until annual town meeting. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Ann. So, and that's because uh, when the select board met Monday, September 18th, um, we were talking about, or I was talking about the fact that uh, we are now officially underway in the development of the fiscal year 2025 operating budget uh, and all that that goes with that, including a capital plan. Uh, community preservation applications are being submitted. Uh, and so my next major step is I'm meeting with all department heads next Wednesday um, for a pretty um, in-depth meeting. It's probably going to take us about two hours. Uh, and that's going to be all the prep for what we need to get done for the budget. Then you should know on October 2nd, the select board will then be looking at um, a five-year financial outlook that I'm working on with the Division of Local Services, and that's through the Department of Revenue. Um, I'm required to give them a, a current financial assessment before the first Tuesday in October. And by the first Tuesday in October, they're required to give a budget message. So that puts a lot of pressure on October 2nd. Um, but the board and I will t start talking about the budget message that will go into everything. So those are some key dates. I think the most important date that I can relay to you folks is um, in the project plan that I've established over the summer, it is my goal for us, the Capital Outlay Committee, the Town Administrator, to meet jointly uh, with the Select Board and the Finance Committee on Monday, December 4th. So that is the target date for the plan uh, to go through the requirement of a public hearing by those two public bodies, <coughs> Select Board and Finance Committee, before the end of December. So that is uh, literally the first business day of the month where the board would meet. Um, actually, the second business day, because I think Friday is the first, but you get my point. Yep. Uh, the first regular board meeting. So that is the schedule generally. Um, on your um, agenda today, you can see that item B is a review of the current capital outlay plan. So that's very simple to do, because what you have in front of you um, is a blow up of Appendix C from the 2023 annual town meeting warrant. So there it is, that is the plan and um, the items under fiscal year 24 that were appropriated under various articles. So this is the current plan in effect. Next to that, uh, so we can review that and I can stop there for a moment, Mr. Chairman, because the next document you have um, simply removes fiscal year 24 Fiscal year 25 becomes the new first year, but most importantly, that far right column that is blank will be filled in during your process this fall, and that's fiscal year 2029. Now, I can speak uh, more in depth, Mr. Chair, on that process, but in accordance with your agenda, you now have an opportunity to review the plan in place, so I'll, I'll yield at that point. You all had a minute to look at uh, the, the, this is the capital plan that was approved at town meeting, okay? Yep. So not much change that we can make if you have, if you want. You're going to be taking it home. If you've got questions and you want to analyze it or go back to uh, the meeting itself and find out where each, each one of the um, requests was made and by whom, okay? But this is a great way that we don't have to go, we'll go back and find out what was offered up, what passed. Uh, this doesn't tell you what didn't pass, but I'm assuming 99 or Everything passed. I was just gonna say, <laughs> I assume 99 or 100% of it. Uh, it's very, very simple, I think, by looking at the topics or the, the departments. Um, the biggie, uh, the biggie's going to be uh, wastewater. Um, as you can see, a total request of 126 million, 50 million, or uh, almost a half, is for 
the uh, wastewater. So, uh, so we can make life easy and just, I know that a lot of time has passed and uh, a lot of different conversations have happened and so forth and other committees are doing other things. And last year we may have been influenced by other committees. The, the main thrust on this is even though Joe is going to explain the next page, because they're going to be filling in FY 29, mm -hmm. um, any, any department and all departments um, and anybody that wants to offer up a, uh, a request from the public per se, um, are going to have to come to us. That's not reflected here, okay? Um, our time between Joe's explanation of this to his department heads, I don't know what they, you're requesting information back. So um, that would be under the next topic. I think you're still under 24, mm -hmm. but if you're ready, I can certainly then go. Well, I want to just explain the process really quickly, even to the public, and then, is uh, that. If I could, Mr. Chair, surely. Uh, quickly, r related to fiscal year 2024, as you've said, the plan was adopted. The articles that were appropriating were accepted. I think the other key thing to re uh, be reminded of is there was the ongoing discussion of what constitutes an amendment that would then trigger the two-thirds requirement. Um, the reason why the chair and I have been using the word simple or easy is you can see that the format that was used this past cycle is being used as promised and going forward. And so the town council opined and the moderator confirmed that they <laughs> consider an amendment would, uh, an example would be, if a department says to me that they need to modify something in the existing plan, so that would be fiscal year 2024, so that would be at a special, which we do not intend to have, or at the annual before the fiscal year ends, that would be an amendment that re re would require a two-thirds vote. Changing or adding fiscal year 29 is not an amendment, nor would it be an amendment if projects are modified within the intervening years. Um, however, my directive to the department heads next Wednesday is going to be first, they're gonna fill out the application that I think you're all familiar with, and Dan, I think you would have seen some of those when it went before Finance Committee, but it's the same form that we've used in years past uh, that has the, uh, you know, it's gonna be fiscal year 2029, what is the level of priority, what are the categorizations, et cetera. Those applications are gonna be returned to me by the middle of October. Uh, and I say that to you because that's gonna impact upon your scheduling. Right. My intent is to have departments come before you first to fill in fiscal year 2029. However, at next week's meeting, I'm also going to advise them, if you have a project that is currently referenced on the fiscal year 25 to 29 plan, so that's the next plan, if you have any changes to that, you must fill out an application, you must advise me of that, and as you meet on 29, I'm also going to advise you on prospective applications. I want to emphasize, however, that given my requirements and my role as town administrator to build the plan, uh, there may be applications that are being sought by department heads that I may not be going forward on. So just because they want to change it, it may not rise to you folks on, amend on changes, excuse me. Additionally, if you're looking at the fiscal year 25 to 29 plan, what you will see is a list of all the departments. So this is now an opportunity, and an example would be where in fiscal year 24 plan, there was nothing related to community development, conservation, council on aging, or emergency management there may be applications for fiscal years 25 or fiscal year 29. Um, I believe those were the only, uh, sorry, no, if you look down a little bit further, you can see 
uh, the library uh, did not have any projects um, in the present plan, excuse me, so I was saying that right, in the plan uh, for 29, 25 to 29. So those departments are still represented. They may or may not have applications, but that's why uh, that's another difference when you're looking at plan in place for fiscal year 24 versus plan document presumed for 25 to 29. <clears throat> so again, next week department heads are going to be directed that anything that they're contemplating for fiscal year 2029, they need to complete the form that they've done in years past. They need to get those forms to me by the middle of October um, so that um, at your, as you do your meeting schedule later on in this agenda, you'll be able to start with those immediately. Um, anything beyond that is going to be uh, department by department, case by case application through me, and then updating you folks. Um, just to confirm, it's anything over twenty-five thousand? Is that correct? I, that we see. Uh, thank you. It's, it, it is fifty. 30. Yep. Yeah. And thank you. Great question. Yep. Yeah, that might be an ongoing. Ongoing. Project, so 50, yeah. 50 is our, our kind of our purview, right? 15 above, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so that we have Dan get a little better understanding, those applications for requests will come to Joe. Then it's our job to schedule the requesters by department to come in and that's where we really get busy and Joe I'm just throwing it out to you what do you think the calendar what part of the 2023 calendar is going to be eaten up by the people coming in now when can we start I'm sorry November maybe and I'm asking yeah, Joe yeah. Uh, well, if I can, I'm going to pull up my actual calendar because you're talking uh, calendar year 2023, correct, right? Yeah. Yeah, between now and Christmas, yep. we're going to have a lot of people coming in in plain English. The, the issue that I have is we're we expecting three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and can we expect two? We are going to be expecting two, three, four, perhaps even five right. departments coming in at a mm -hmm. time. Correct. And we might be meeting two or three times a week to get it done. So that, that's why, I'm, and again, if we don't understand or we have questions, will it, they have to come in again. So all I'm saying is if there are 15 departments and let's say we do three, three a pop, we're looking at five days, but it could be three weeks to get the five days in. So I'm just letting you know to anticipate a little action we haven't had any this is where we start blooming sure okay um, if, if to clarify my directive to department heads uh, applications for fiscal year 2029 are due into administration by close of business uh, so 4 p.m. on Friday October 13th okay so if you stick to a Friday schedule um, a meeting on a Friday October 20th could be your first meeting where you have multiple departments coming in and presenting their fiscal year 29 applications. So you could start as, uh, you could really get into it uh, as early as the week of October 16th. Well, let me ask you something. Uh, just because they submit doesn't mean they're gonna do a verbal request. Do you, will you tell them no if they request something that is, shouldn't be on here? Uh, for fiscal year 29, generally, no. I would I'd be looking to put it out there uh, for the plan, for this process. Okay. Because um, for me, one of the greatest values, and uh, if you've been watching select board meetings generally, I think you're going to know where I'm coming from. Um, as town administrator, I can build a plan. But if I did it by myself, I'd be doing it in a vacuum. I'm not a public body. You folks are a public body. You folks are the perfect manner uh, a mechanism by which the public can follow or participate in the examination of capital. And so for that reason, projects contemplated to be added for fiscal year 2029, I would be inclined to put on the plan based on the application, have it go through your process, and also have it go through 
the scrutiny of the joint meeting of select board and finance committee. Okay, so there's no triage at your level. Correct. It comes at our Correct. level. Correct. I think that's the best way to go transparency wise. Um, and so what that means is, yes, on October, uh, and let's say this October 20th for planning purposes, uh, you uh, would get from me ahead of that meeting an updated 25 to 29 plan reflecting a proposed 29. Not proposed by me, but proposed by application. So that becomes the first focus of our efforts and your first focus of scrutiny through the public meeting process. Uh, so Mr. Chairman, to your point, uh, you know, there are I think roughly, we'll call it 15 programs or departments that um, are represented on the plan. So if we have that number, you could conceivably um, either set a threshold uh, or uh, seek input on all of them, which I think would be well served. And we could break it down that you hear from five of the biggest on the 20th, and then future meeting the other five and the other five, and then do a check-in as to where we're at on 29. And in the meantime, again, I'm gonna be having ongoing conversations about the other years of the plan. Um, what was really helpful last year was also when we went on site visits. Absolutely, yeah. So if we can make sure we have time for those if we get to a crunch yep. point, because that really helped when we went to 204 <coughs> and you know walked all through the building and looked at the furnace and all those kind of things. And then we went to um, Sacramento and saw what's coming, physically saw it. So that, that was also, I thought, a very valuable part of the plan last year and our end date looks like this December 4th right we're correct. trying to so, right. so it looks like a busy November I think so okay um, if, if I may just a response mr. chair sure um, first on the site visits yeah. uh, absolutely oops everybody wave your hands yeah. so this is the town saving money on uh, electricity <laughs> we hope there we go thank you Jamie um, anyway that's gonna look good to music um, <laughs> Site visits, I think, are essential. I think they're a great tool. And the mechanism that we've used to comply with the open meeting law is you do a site visit, and then you have a meeting so that you can do your deliberation because you cannot deliberate during site visit. Um, but I think that's great. And so as the applications are contemplated for fiscal year 29, and as you go through in your next agenda item, your calendar, I could look at the 20th also being the first site visits related to the applications. Um, but we'll always consider that you may have uh, the first portion of your day dedicated to site visit and the remainder of your meeting scheduled for that day for deliberation. In the past, the site visits are ad hoc. So okay. depending on the discussion and depending on your inquiries, okay, I mean, Mark, for instance, last year had some very definite concerns that we had to visit maybe a couple times, right? So that becomes an ad hoc situation where we, we, were no, we knew we were going to go on Monday, but it turns out we needed to be there Wednesday and Friday too. So that's the ad hoc situation. Dan, you had a question. Yeah, just for my own edification, um, the applications that come before this committee uh, do we have the up or down authority? We can give an opinion. An opinion. Okay. An opinion. So that we sort of give you the financing end of it and how it's going to be financed, if at all, comes from the town administrator. So if, if there is a request that doesn't fit into the financial plan, we can advise, yeah, this sounds really good, but where does it fit in mm -hmm. in terms of one, two, three, four, five? Does it fit in or not? So we basically make a, re a recommendation? We can, as a committee, we can vote four to one, for or against it. Yes or no, thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. Or as a committee, yes, sir. So I, not to interrupt, but I want to follow up on that as um, okay. when you're done. We can, we can vote as a committee. That we're not for it. So that following that process through, yep. the plan is submitted, mm -hmm. the projects that are included, mm -hmm. um, 
are given an up or down decision by the Yeah, the majority of them we that, that will go to the the to Joe. Mm -hmm. And then Joe, you submit the capital plan, including the new applications to the finance committee and the board of selectmen. Uh, correct, but technically you folks do as well because the section that talks about uh, the capital outlay committee is it says that the capital outlay committee will meet jointly with select board and finance committee. So even though the charter requires me to build a plan, you folks are using your public process to seek input and conversation and make recommendations. Um, the plan that gets presented is the administrator's plan, but as I understand the purpose, you folks at that joint meeting can also weigh in because what I'm doing is creating a plan that I then hand over to FinCom, a finance committee and select board, but then becomes part of the select board's package. So even if there's disagreement, the charter has a mechanism by which this committee can offer your uh, insights and thoughts on whether something should remain or come out of the plan and why you think that. So that December 4th meeting is the culmination of all of your work, but it's your next big step. You're giving your thoughts to select board and finance committee, and then they'll make their recommendations on articles and the plan in the future, uh, and they're going to be guided by your, your comments and your thoughts. Okay. Before I yield, though, I also want to emphasize December 4th uh, is the earliest that we can do the, the hearing because it's required to be done in December. Um, every week starting October 2nd, I'll be giving the select board updates on the schedule. So if there's a point where we feel like we may need to do it on the 11th, we would still go to that. Point being, we have a target date to meet the requirements of the charter. It's the earliest we could do it, but we know we would do it no later than the end of December. So that December 4th date should still be in somewhat flux. The, let me just make one. <clears throat> the meeting with the Finance Committee and, this, and the selectmen, okay? We are an equal player yep. in this presentation, okay? And that's where we turn to our experts here, why we made the recommendation and so forth. But the, we are equal partners in this thing. Um, the, uh, the idea that we're just throwing this stuff and giving it to them without any kind of support is not true, yeah. okay? So um, one thing that we have to remember, and, and it, sort of comes out in, into other committees too. Um, we're advisory. We, we talked about that on another committee. We're, we're advisory. And we're advising on our knowledge, not our expertise, but our knowledge of the situation, of the request, and how that request should be handled. So that, that sort of sets the rules of the game, okay? Did you have something? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I have, I have two, two questions, comments, whatever. As far as your process with FinCom, do you, we have to re, and I'll ask Mark because I know, Dan, you, you haven't been on the committee more than five minutes. Um, do, when you finish, you know, we, when the, the department heads come in and give us those applications, do, the, do you present those the next week to FinCom? No. And can I? I, we waited, I think we waited till we finally finished. Right, and, yeah. I, and I, I felt like last year there was a lot of comments about, oh, what is this number, what is that number, and why are we doing this, and why are we doing that, instead of maybe getting FinCom prepped prior to this 12-4 meeting to see what, so they're not surprised, because otherwise they have not really seen it, seen the plan. Well, like, is it, is, is it possible that, that you go back every week and update them as to what we covered, at least broadly, with the applications? I, is that possible? I get emails and I have conversations with their chairman. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Dan is more than welcome and uh, Mark is more than welcome to show them where we, what we got right now. Right. right. I'm just but I, I think um, we have met, we, 
we have the ability to make comments. We have the ability to take back something that we've said. Of course. And I think it becomes very confusing to other committees, like if you were reporting to your committee that you're the liaison, that we don't do that. We never, we've never done that. When I was on the Finance Committee a lot of years, we were given the documents, we were given the numbers when, when it was appropriate. On that meeting date. When, when, when the plan is complete, because it's, there's less confusion. Right, right. There's less confusion. Yes. I appreciate the question, and I think where, where I think it's coming from. However, we also have to contemplate the select board, because although the finance committee sits in judgment of everything of a financial nature, right. the charter requires first that the administrator build a comprehensive budget, and comprehensive means everything. Uh, and that also gets to the creation of the warrant with articles. Those articles have recommendations of both the select board and the finance committee, and that is the process that they really begin in earnest sometime after Jan or in January, if you will. But it is the select board under our charter who then are the ones that put forward the budget and all of its components. Got it. And so while, yes, we want the finance committee to feel informed and to be informed, um, I would also say, especially for you and I, select board representative on FinCom and the agent of the select board, for the select board to equally feel informed. But that is the true intent of that meeting in December. Okay. Yep. Okay. But point very well taken. Yeah, no, I was just, you know, I, I often think about the, you know, the amount of time and energy all the department heads have to spend, and it's like they start at square one every time. Right. That's all. That was my that was my thought. So I'm fine with that. Um, my second request, I guess, would be for on-site visits. I personally would love to go to the Public Works. <laughs> I I've never been to the dump. <laughs> all right. Um, so so I'd like to come see to my house every Thursday. I'll, I'll, I'll drive you over. I'm a girl who lives alone, and there's some things I don't do: cutting the grass and taking the, well, the garbage Chairman, to the dump. If I, I may. Um, <laughs> And I want everyone. I sir, love the dump. Sir, uh, amen. I cut the grass amen. and take my own garbage. So yeah, we can go. But you folks can only advise with that that in depth and level of knowledge. So I, for one, um, would love to take you there, and we'll take you there as a group. Um, same thing with our harbor. You know, even if you've been, and I will also tell you that I've talked to our water department, our water superintendent. Um, I want to see those buildings because yeah, I haven't yeah. seen those either. But yeah. No, I think there's great value in the site visits. And, and I will say that, you know, as well, mark the time how long it took me to get there, but as we are back to predominantly meeting in person, mm -hmm. whatever the health seasons are, um, you know, we're, re we're returning to a process and a normalcy that we had prior to 2020 and a form and documentation and people sitting in judgment, you know, that's all stability. <clears throat> so now we, I think we can take deeper dives and look at more things. And again, the site visits are not public meetings, no. so it's not something that we're going to bring a field trip, but it is absolutely something that you as a public body advising can and should do. And as you get to your next topic on the calendar, I'll so certainly incorporate that in the mindset and if ever it's uh if we've already covered it and you want to go back let me know because <laughs> i, I think that's, pass and dump that's the garbage. benefit yeah, you can but uh, to ann's point and <laughs> see, we're going to go in the uh secret exit uh, entrance so to speak yeah. it's the where the employees go um but you'll truly see the entire operation right right yeah. fast dump on the cape um absolutely just to finish this, put a bow on it. Um, we I'm all, the chairman. Well, from my point of view, Rich, oh. I'm not taking off <laughs> anything from you. I'll go. <laughs> it's just we looked at the big things coming up, right, in the out years. Mm -hmm. And so I would um, vote for um, the harbor because that's going to be a big piece. Absolutely. And it, it was um, the learning was amazing by just getting out on the water and seeing the problem. Yep. So. I think there's great value in like the big ticket items that we know are yeah. going to get, you know. I think it's, this whole thing started with site visits 
prior to Joe being yeah. here, okay? And, and it started, yeah. we would get the community center's bus, and the question is that we had so many wash ashores, <coughs> okay? <laughs> and they started talking about, you know, the Omega Beach, if there was such a, well, I go to Red River, I don't even know what, the, you know, Bank Street Beach. Right. Um, what's the little, little Earl ones? Road. Earl Road or whatever, there's some. Jack knife. Uh, I'm not gonna name the ones I go to because I like those and people don't go <laughs> yeah. to Yeah, that's right. Anyway, it, it started that way where we were making decisions as the capital outlay on especially beaches and erosion and parking lots and mm -hmm. paving yeah, no, no. and bathrooms and it and it just went on and on and finally somebody said I gotta go see it so we just jumped in the bus and um, we went and I'll never forget Red River which is the biggest or in terms yeah. of size uh, that year they were looking to pave the road in on Red River Beach in the parking and we had guys, one of them was me, that actually got out of the bus and walked the entire sure. to see where the cracks were. And we didn't want to end the asphalt here. We actually had to take it to here because this was pending. So anyway, that's how it started, and it really worked. It really does work. And, yes. you know, it's like we went to see, we talked about water. Um, one of them, they had just built a new house or whatever the building was, and it had... Cedar Shake. Right, right here. We're okay. About Cedar Shakes, yeah. And it had Cedar Shakes. And they were um, primed already. They were whatever you call the, <laughs> what do you call, Mark, when the shake has been done already? Yeah. Dipped. Uh, dipped. Oh. They were already dipped, ready. And they also had Hardy Board. And it was beige. I'll never forget that because I was building a <laughs> house in Virginia with Hardy Board. And the idea is it's concrete. And it has the color in it. You pick the color. So we go to the house, and I'm not blaming anybody, but somebody didn't like the color after the house was done. After you pay an exorbitant fee for Hardy Board, and I'm sure it was funded by the government, but the color wasn't right. So the next step was, while we were there, they're painting the Hardy Board. So it, it's sort of like we sort of question why. So, you know, it, it's why do we have to spend an extra $10,000 to paint it instead of it being taupe? You know, it was beige. You know, it's like I get it. tacky yeah. slacks versus sand color slacks. Yeah. Does it make a difference? You know, depends on the shirt. But anyway, uh, that's where we, let, we leave off with that. I think by asking for a, a visit, yeah. um, would be at the time, if you, if you have some that you sort of know you want, we'll put it on a list. And you're in charge, okay? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll start a list of the places we want to visit. Sure. And that would make life easy. And when, they, when the requesters come in and we have questions about why did you paint taupe instead of beige, we might want to go and visit. So that that's... We can wrap that up. Uh, I just wanted to make, we'll start making, yes, Mark. Okay, just two questions. If you had an unanticipated expense, say, for example, you had to put a new roof on here, you didn't anticipate in the capital plan, you want to put air conditioning down to a floor. How does, that, how does that work? In other words, if it hasn't been on the capital plan and you wanted to put on a roof, you had to put it on a roof next year, how is that handled on the capital plan? Well, I think um, the concept of unanticipated and emergent um, might change how we act. In other words, God forbid there's an act of God and this building or any building needs to be repaired um, in the present capital year. Um, I don't know that it would be looked at as capital. I'd have to rely upon council, but it may be looked at as an emergency response. Um, and that would be the standard I would look at. If, however, um, there is something that happens that's not of an urgent nature but still needs to, be get, to, needs to get done in the present year, um, even if we had funding in the short term, 
what I imagine could happen is at the next annual town meeting, there be an article to amend the fiscal year 2024 plan so that we have an appropriation for those costs so there could be some level of reimbursement, if you will. That then requires a two-thirds vote. What about but 25? It, um, I believe council and the moderator have opined that because that plan, fiscal year 25 through 29, is coming up for discussion in total as that five-year plan, which is the requirement, it's a straight majority vote, but it also wouldn't be of an urgent nature in the scenario that I think you've described. Right. So if it's urgent and it impacts upon the present year, it is a two-thirds vote, no question asked. But it's like you want to put air conditioning in in two years, and we don't have it on the capital plan. It, can, you, can we just bring in the capital request and add it on? I'm just yes. Thinking. Moderator and count, so council uh, made an opinion, and the opinion then had to be evaluated by the moderator, and the moderator indicated that because your fiscal year 25 to 29, um, there's two sets of articles. First is one article that says to adopt the plan, and that's 25 to 29. So even though you had in prior year's versions a different number, changing that number or adding more plan uh, projects to the plan does not constitute a two-thirds majority vote amendment. It would be adopting the plan as presented. And then the other set of articles are the appropriating articles for the next year, so fiscal year 25. So say we'll have Article 15, a vote to adopt the five-year capital outlay plan, fiscal year 2025 to fiscal year 2029. Straight majority vote, up or down, and then appropriating <coughs> articles for any of the projects that were listed for fiscal year 25. And generally speaking, those require a straight majority vote. Um, there may be changes of quantum of vote uh, if there's borrowings or other things. Okay, so it's not a, not a major thing if you have to add to it. Correct. Yeah. Be, because if I may, Mark, because we're all going through the act of creating a five-year plan, and the five-year plan, in the end, has to be presented to and approved by town meeting. Yeah. And one question, this would be more us. Would it help, uh, like say, like facility maintenance, to to sum up the, the line items. In other words, yeah, the only yes. time we have total yes. sums are down the bottom, just for Yes, um, I don't know how easy or difficult. It's very is. simple to do, in fact, the, um, well, these are copies upon copies upon copies, but uh, what's meant to be a gray line. Yes. Um, I have no uh, objection or concern adding a total line, because it's already embedded there for the totals at the end. Um, however, the plan is every project, every year, bottom line numbers uh, generally. So you're adopting every facet on the page, and then fiscal year 25, you're simply appropriating. So if we add that, it shouldn't be that, well, I vote to amend the bottom line total under facilities maintenance, because that's not what's in question. What's in question is the entire plan. So adding, I would also add this, adding information or expanding information, because what you don't see here that you would have seen in pre, uh, other versions is the funding schedule, yeah. right? We don't have that yet. We wouldn't have that yet. Uh, and it's technically not part of the plan. It's part of the appropriating articles. Yeah. Well, we can add things, and I think that still doesn't rise to the level of an amendment requiring a two-thirds vote. Just so I think for, subtotals, absolutely critical. Yeah, just to compare and just, yep, absolutely. just gives you a general idea. Yep. Thanks, Rich. Oh, no, and also don't forget, we're not only expand, expanding your 29, but vertically, that's horizontally, okay, and then you go vertical. But top, by, by the topic or the, the, by the, I'm going to say the requester, administrative, channel eight, engineering, for the, so forth down to wastewater each of those sections can be expanded vertically because there might be more requests that'll appear in 29 so it, it it doesn't 
I guess my point is, don't think the current projects that are listed here are going to be forced into 29. Right. So if we're adding more to do, it goes in 29, should it happen that way. Okay? So, yes, sir. I, uh, I went to the town charter to see if the if there's a definition of capital outlay, which there is. Mm -hmm. But then I noticed that, uh, and I might have an old copy of the town charter, but it, it, this, this version talks about submitting a seven-year capital outlay plan. So is, do I have an older version of the town um, charter? You, you do, and we all do, even if you go online and print it out currently. Uh, the town clerk is updating the charter uh, to reflect changes, I think, that have been done over the last two years. Okay. Um, but we did have uh, verified at last year's town meeting that it did go from a seven-year to a five-year plan. Okay. So that um, I believe sh uh, the town clerk's looking at um, a, perhaps a newer version that may be available at town meeting, but it's understood that the seven was changed to five. Okay. Thank you. Good point. Absolutely. <coughs> there any other questions? Um, so that we just do a quick review, the um, October 2nd is a five-year uh, financial plan to the selectmen. Mm -hmm. um, October 13th are the department requests to Joe. The 20th is the first review of the 29 requests. Uh, that's October. Uh, what we're leaving empty is November, and basically that's the work-through month. That's, okay? And that's when Ann gets the town bus, drives it, and she takes the all around. <laughs> and I apologize, and I regret to inform you that I will be your driver. <laughs> you will be the driver? Yes, I'm covered under the town's insurance policies. <laughs> we were just going to rent one. Uh, all right. <laughs> we'll just get all the SUVs together. Um, Sorry, so Ann. that's where we stand with that, and the next... Big date, which is subject to change in de because it has to be met in December, is a December 4th meeting of our presentation of the capital plan to the selectmen in the FinCom. So, Mr. Chair, if I could then. Sure. Um, it sounds like you're, you're agreeable to your um, next major business meeting being Friday, October 20th. Right. Um, and then when you look at the calendar, um, if you go weekly... You would have the 20th and 27th of October. You would have Friday, November 3rd. Friday, November 10th, as we all would understand, is a holiday because it's when we celebrate, or excuse me, not celebrate, but recognize uh, Veterans Day. So you may want to, if you meet that week of November 6th, choose a date other than Friday. The 17th of November should generally be available. Then, of course, you're in Thanksgiving week, and I will tell you that I am unavailable um, from the 20th through the 27th. That doesn't uh, mean we can't meet. Well, that is also the week of Thanksgiving, and the town hall will be closed Thursday and Friday, uh, Thanksgiving and the day after. Can't meet. But you could meet during that week if you wanted. Martha was saying she likes company. So, <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is Friday you'd have October 20th, October 27th, November 3rd, um, November 17th for sure. So there's four meetings right there. Um, if you picked another date during the week of the 6th, that's five meetings. And if you meet the week of the 27th, um, I wouldn't recommend December 1st, that Friday, if we are still on track for December 4th. But right there, you got to six meetings without having to do multiple in a week. Um, and I'm not opposed to two meetings a week because it was also about um, everybody who works for the town that it's done during their work day yep. yeah. so they don't have to stay at night or do anything thank you yep so I think mr. chair it's back to you folks as to um, uh, and you don't necessarily have to coordinate everything today but um, but if we can assume that your next meeting is October 20th we can certainly have that be yes. uh, very impactful I can't make the 20th sorry and I can't change my appointment I can't make the 20th so, like I said, we can meet the week of October 16th or anything else. Okay. Uh, what day can you meet in yeah. the week of the I 10th? can do the Thursday before. Um, sorry. 
October 20, God. So, Mr. Chair, maybe the five of you want to talk about your schedules generally. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't have to be a Friday, per se. I'm not no. good on the 16th. We used to do Tuesdays and Thursdays. We used to do four or five. The question is, is a morning meeting better for everybody, a day meeting, or is like later in the day? What's better? I'm open. I, I'm open. I'm open. On, yeah. Generally, Mark, that week is yeah, really good. tough for me. Morning, Jeff. Um, let's set. Is everybody good for the twenty? You're not good for the twenty. Right. right. So that's and that's a Monday. Monday? Friday. It's a Friday. What's yeah. the third? It's the nineteenth. The nineteenth. I can oh, do the nineteenth. Nineteenth. You good for the nineteenth? Absolutely, because again, applications are to me on the thirteenth. So that gives you me plenty can, of time. Yep. The nineteenth. I'm yeah. not. I'm nineteenth and twentieth. I'm away. Babysitting. Eighteenth. 18th would be fine. 18th? In the, yeah, Oops. I can change that. Yes, okay. I can do the 18th. We got to the 18th. So you that would be Wednesday, 18th? October 18th. Yeah. And um, the first one, and from, from that point, let's look forward rather than trying to do it. Mm -hmm. you know, as you we get. stick with the 10 o'clock? It's okay with me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And do you want any site visits that day? No. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just answering, and we we don't know enough to go for a. Site and if visit. if I may, that there are I think I think two items, well one item you have to have on your next agenda, so the charter requires you to go through a process of reorganization, it doesn't mean that you would change anything, but you still have to vote it, and report that organization back, to the select board, so you should have that as an agenda item on the 18th, uh, and also at the 18th I'd like to introduce our finance director town accountant. Um, Kathleen Barrett, um, you may all know of her, but I think it's important for her to be formally introduced. Uh, and then we let her go back and help me figure out how we're going to fund it. Um, but I think, um, I, I think it's great for you folks to meet Kathleen, and I'm truly very excited to have her as a partner in government. So Let me ask you something. Um, when do we know from you the, the three types of funding? which are becoming available. So I think that's a question better for Kathleen and I to talk about on the 20th, Eight. is the schedule for the funding 18th. decisions. Oh, sorry, the 18th. That's okay. Will you, have, have, will it, yeah. you have spoken about it? Oh, absolutely. We're, we've been, so you can let us know that, you know, you get $3 here, $7 here. Yes. However, I want to say that I, I think what you'll find on October 20th, damn it. 18th. So, I apologize. 18th. Okay. Sorry about that language. Um, on Wednesday, October 18th, what Kathleen and I will be able to talk about is uh, the next step for the tax rate certification, even though we don't rely greatly on that as a funding source, but that will tie into her free cash certification funding as well. Um, but we are, Kathleen and I are actively working on not only the, far, the current financial assessment, but a five-year financial outlook. Uh, which now finally dovetails with the capital plan. Okay. So um, that could be a topic of consideration for that meeting on October 18th as well. Okay. You're going to do the agenda? Sure. Please. Uh, yes, because the agenda will be based on applications that I've received and how many we think we can get through, okay. as well as those other topics. Yeah. Yep. Anything else? Do I hear a motion? Motion. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. I second it. Meeting adjourned.